welcome to this month's episode of Money Mountaineering with Peter Newworth, FSA, FCA, where this award-winning actuary and author interviews experts that help us answer the question, what's your future worth? I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. Excited to introduce you to Pete's guest, Mary Jo LeFay. She is a licensed home equity retirement income specialist with Mutual of Omaha, and she has been a reverse mortgage specialist for the last 20 years. So we are going to learn a ton from Mary Jo and Pete today. Take it away, Pete. Well, thanks a lot, Hope. And and thank you, Mary Jo, for 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 joining me. I mean, it's, this is really a thrill for me. And, and, uh, you know, we've, we've known each other quite a while, um, back when you, uh, were working behind the scenes with, uh, Barry Sachs and Barry and I were developing some research around the use of reverse mortgage for, uh, addressing sequence of return risks and, and retirement planning in general. But since that time, it seems that you've gotten a a new role at a new company. And uh, now I understand you're at Mutual of Omaha. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing for Mutual of Omaha? Sure, thank you. Thank you, Hope, for the kind introduction. That was great. And thank you, Pete, for having me on your podcast. It's an honor to be one of your guests. And yeah, so I started my career uh, almost 20 years ago at Wells Fargo. I was there for five years. And then I left to go to a small boutique lender uh, that was Synergy One Lending. And Synergy One was actually bought by Mutual of Omaha several years ago. So now I'm uh, with a great company, Mutual of Omaha, and uh, they're giving us tons of support and really uh, kind of opening up the field to, to a wider range of, of uh, people that are looking for ways to tap their home equity and, and fund a more comfortable retirement. And uh, so I spend my days talking to financial advisors and estate planning and family law attorneys, CPAs, uh, real estate agents helping their clients downsize, caregiving agencies, and uh, anyone who wants to find out more about how to use home equity for retirement needs. Well, that's that's great. And, and you know, Mutual of Omaha is a terrific company. So I, I'm personally very thrilled to, to see a, a major insurance company get into the into the business because um, I, I for a long time, I've thought reverse mortgages make a world of sense in, in many circumstances. Um, but as I as I think, you know, my work and Barry's work is very, very theoretical. We we were mathematicians and physicists and and tax people, and and we don't really deal with the practicalities so much. These things make sense on paper, but you actually make them happen in the real world. Can you can you tell talk a little bit about what that really means, and how do you sure. actually get a reverse mortgage? Yeah, yeah. Well, when I started at Wells Fargo, I really did not have a lot of experience. I've never originated conventional loans. Um, so it was a learning process. And I was lucky in that um, through, uh, through a mutual uh, business acquaintance, uh, Barry Sachs and I were introduced probably in about 2005 or six. So it was just a few years into my career. And that was really a game changer for me because, um, you know, Barry's work and his tireless research and working with you and, and your expertise has really given, given me a, a whole new perspective on retirement planning and, you know, all the mathemat mathematics that are behind it and how important it is to be able to manage cash flow throughout your retirement and make sure you don't run out of money. I mean, that's, that's really the, the end game is making sure that uh, everyone has enough to cover their housing needs and to have a comfortable place to live and to be able to to you know provide their care needs and and just basic living and have have the lifestyle that they are hoping to achieve throughout their retirement. So um you know being exposed to your research and Barry's research and and having the you know the honor really to to be a part of that has been uh, very, very enlightening and enriching for me and for my clients. And it's helped me understand how to relate to financial advisors and, and legal attorney uh, professionals and, and legal professionals and what their clients' needs are and, and really how they approach that. Um, so um, I've oh, well. you know, learned a lot and, and I've, I've been able to share that with my, my referral partners and with, with their clients. Okay, so, but, but, but again, 
how do you actually get one? I mean, is it is it as simple as just calling up calling up Mary Jo or or your local bank and saying, hey, I want a reverse mortgage, and they say, uh, yeah, well, just fill out this mortgage application and you're and you're done, or is it that simple, or or is it? Yeah, no I, I certainly wish it were that simple, uh, and that's um, that's what a lot of people think when they call me that this is going to be a you know a couple day process and. It's actually, it, there's a full underwriting behind it, just like with conventional lending. Um, it's actually in some ways a little bit more rigorous because these loans, uh, primarily about 95% of the loans we do are HUD insured. So uh, they're just a regular FHA loan with deferred repayment. So basically they've taken an FHA loan, which is a very very consumer friendly and somewhat uh, uh, intensive as far as qualifying compared to a conventional loan. And they've made it um, customized for seniors. So there's no repayment required. Uh, there are minimal income and credit requirements, but we do still have to show that the borrower has the willingness and the capacity to pay their property charges. So that's the main uh, agreement that the borrower is signing up for when they obtain a reverse mortgage, uh, whether it be an FHA insured home equity conversion mortgage, or if it's the proprietary um, home safe or one of the proprietary jumbo reverse mortgages, they have to show that willingness and capacity and capacity is shown by income. So they either need to show they have enough ongoing income to pay their property taxes, homeowners insurance, homeowners association dues, if there is an HOA involved, and maintenance and utilities on the property. And uh, if they don't have enough ongoing income, then the loan proceeds can cover that for them. But we have to show that there are enough loan proceeds to do that for their life expectancy. Um, and so, you know, we look at willingness and capacity and, uh, you know, we pull a credit report to see if they tend to make their payments on time and so forth. And there are very few people that get turned down when they are applying for a reverse mortgage. But there is that process uh, to make sure that they're going to be able to stay in their home and those property charges will be paid for their life expectancy, either by their income or their loan proceeds. So we want to set them up for success. Um, that is a requirement that they live in the house and pay their property charges. So um, the lenders are, are required by HUD to make sure that that's going to be a success for everyone. If you're if you're a, if you are getting to an age, and I, I, I guess it's now 55, it's not even 62. It used to be 62. Um, right. And you're saying, boy, there's something I should be. Do I, I really need to do something about our house. Either I have to we have to sell it or we have to refinance or, oh, my God, we're going to have to move or we're getting old or we. It's got two floors and we only we can only live on one or or something. But if if somebody's getting to the point of wanting to do something with the house, they ought to call you to see, well, not there might be a, a reverse mortgage as a as a possible technique to solve whatever problem they've got. Right. Yeah. And and whether it's reverse mortgages or downsizing or whatever, you know, I think it's good for people to start looking at that ahead of time. Right. Maybe maybe look at it if you're going to do it five five years down the road and um, whether you know, whether it's urgent and you can't afford to make your mortgage payment or you're just thinking, what are my options mm -hmm. to create the retirement of my dreams? Um, right. You know, start looking at it as early as possible. I have a lot of my clients are 75 or 80 and I'll get their kids on a call and their kids are 60 and they start thinking, hey, you know, when we hang up, I'm going to call you <laughs> about my plan and what do I want to do in five years or 10 years so I can start getting all my ducks in a row. And, and that's a great, great, you know, position to be in to really have some lead time. Um, and, you know, I'll advise them, maybe you don't want to add any more debt to your house right now. Right, right. Maybe, you, you know, maybe don't remodel the kitchen until you're really ready to sell and, right. you know, and don't add another 500,000 to send your two kids to private college uh, thinking that, you know, you're going to be able to pay that off because maybe really you're not. So, um, you know, just kind of walking them through what are their possibilities now or later, um, I think can, can give people a lot of clarity and a sense of peace. Well, I, un unfortunately we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to ask you one last question, which is, 
I'm kind of boggled from a from a theoretical standpoint why there aren't many, many, many more reverse mortgages, and and yet it's a, it's been a very slow to grow um, business. Um, do you think that there are psychological bar things that are getting in the way? And if so, do you have any last minute kind of advice for the for the listeners as to sure. how to overcome those? psychological barriers? Yeah, I see two things, actually. I see a lot of misinformation. Uh, again, you know, what we talked about earlier, people think you're selling your house to the bank or signing it over to the bank, and then your kids are going to get nothing, which, you know, is is just not the way it works. It's, it's much more similar to a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. You're just getting a credit line against your house that you can draw on for your, to fund your retirement. And then you're still going to get all the future appreciation and you can still leave your house to your kids. Um, so it, there's a lot of kind of really old information out there about reverse mortgages that people haven't been updated on. And then there's also, you know, the sense, and, and I believe this came from when people relied mostly on pensions, there's the sense in people's minds, they always have the idea, I want to leave my house to my kids. And I mean, who doesn't want to get a house, right? The, but the reality is, Probably unless you have one child and they don't already have a house that they live in, they're probably going to sell that house. So, you know, I think it's it's really it's on us, mm -hmm. um, you as an actuary, Barry, you know, doing the mathematical modeling and the financial advisors to help people understand that. Yeah. Do, do you want to leave the house to the kids? I mean, are your kids all going to move into that house? Or are they going to sell it and liquidate it? So in that case, you want to leave the biggest pot of overall wealth to your heirs. And, and that might, uh, to facilitate that, you might need to tap your equity to live on while your investments are losing value. Like this year, for instance, would be a great I think, year. I think, I, I think it's beautifully well said. And what you've, what you've basically said, and, and I think this is a great way to, to end this, is that the world has changed. And so it, probably makes sense to leave the 401k and spend the house as opposed to spend the 401k and leave the house. Right. And secondly, reality, I mean, reputation persists longer than reality. And so not only has things changed fundamentally, but also reverse mortgages are not what they used to be. So right. Thank you so much, Thank Mary you, Jo, for, for being here and enlightening us. And um, I hope everybody gets got something out of it. And um, I hope many of you will um, be available for our um, continuing education piece on, on silver divorce down the road. And um, hope I think I'm going to turn it back to you if you're still there. I'm here. <laughs> I'm producing the show, babe. <laughs> That was fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. I think we need to actually leave, leave us, leave our viewers with Mary Jo telling us how can CFPs and lawyers and other professionals get in touch with you about that continuing edu course, education course around silver divorce. Thank you, Hope. That's a great question. So uh, we've submitted those for uh, approval for continuing education for the Bar Association and for CFPs. And so that should be available in early 2023. And you can contact me or Pete, either one, email, telephone, and we can put you on the list to uh, let you know when those, those credits are going to be available. It'll be a two-hour course, so you'll get two hours of, of continuing education credit. And we'll be offering it by Zoom. And we'll also be doing uh, possibly live presentations in the Bay Area and at national conferences. So we we'll look forward to getting that word out to everyone and sharing uh, all the work that Pete and Barry have done to put that together. It's, it's a pretty phenomenal presentation. I'm looking forward to sharing it. Excellent. Excellent. And so you can learn all about this at peternewworth.com and Mary Jo's new website which will be coming in 2023 as well. Incandescent is proud to be supporting both of these amazing entrepreneurs and big thinkers around how we can maximize our future finances. So 
Peter Newworth with Money Mountaineering and What's Your Future Worth, his two books, and fantastic Mary Jo LeFay. So we thank you all for listening to Money Mountaineering this evening, and we look forward to talking to you in the next month. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.